Welcome to another episode of the program, Easy Access to Healthcare for All, a program that brings you up-to-date information on the National Health Insurance Scheme as it makes headway into universal health coverage in Nigeria. This episode of the program is special as we bring you highlights of the peer review meeting of the NHIS, which held in the ancient city of Kanu recently. It was an avenue for the managers of the scheme across various levels to learn from one another and re strategize on issues bordering on the operations of the scheme. Join me after the break for full details. I am Aisha Mohammed Ahmed, your regular anchor. Please don't go away. First on the program is the news diary. On the lineup, NHIS intervenes in the crisis between its key stakeholders. The NHIS on Tuesday, 22nd January, met with health maintenance organizations and the healthcare providers. The meeting became necessary for the scheme to intervene as a result of the anxiety that rose from the earlier announcement by the Healthcare Providers Association and its other associate bodies that it plans to drop health maintenance organizations and impose a new tariff structure for private health insurance. At the meeting, both parties were allowed to express their grievances. We noticed more than ever before or stronger than ever before the astronomic rising cost of health goods and services as we match it abysmally against these reimbursements we are getting from our fellow stakeholders, the HMOs, in the private health insurance. And I put emphasis, private health insurance, because you cannot give somebody money to go to Mr. Biggs and is heading for Swiss session. Now, the healthcare provider's misfortune, sir, is like we are taking 100% of the risk instead of spreading the risk in healthcare financing in the private sector. We have had to bear a lot of things, a lot of pains, a lot of sorrows under the principle of patriotism and national caring for the sick. And we noticed that provider facilities have remained the greatest and heaviest cross-bearers. So we're worried that in the last 15 years, for example, we'll be singing the need for our HMOs, who are our co-critical stakeholders in this health insurance, to have a second look at the tariffs. In health insurance, as is practiced here, is the role of a gatekeeper. Currently, we don't see that being done. What we see is a gate opener. And what do I mean by that? A patient goes to hospital with a headache. He wants to treat that headache. Health insurance as practiced under the law should be for medically necessary care. Not that the patient goes in for a headache and then you notice that he's limping. You now want to do an operation on his uh, calcaneus bone to prevent the limp. That's not what it's about medically necessary care. And we notice that providers are always escalating the cost of care by consultants, sending to consultants, referring to consultants, when it can be managed at a primary care level. With the whole aim to... Responding, Professor Nasser Sambo, Executive Secretary, NHIS, stressed the need for stakeholders to understand the context, content and processes, as well as also work within the law establishing health insurance in the country. It's important that you understand the system from academic point of view, and you also understand the system from practical point of view. If you lose the academic side, and you just look at the practice side, you may be missing the point, and vice versa. So it is important to know the theory underpinning the, the, the operations of the National Health Insurance Scheme, and you also know the practice, and you also know the context. So in other words, I'm saying for us to operate optimally in the health insurance, we, the drivers of, this, of the system, and 
the recipient of the end product of the National Health Insurance Scheme. We need to understand the context, we need to understand the content, and we need to understand the processes, and we need to understand the, 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 the circumstance, the environment upon which we, are, which we are operating. And more importantly, we need to understand the law driving the implementation of the health insurance scheme. Sambo further said that NHIS is the only legally recognized body to come up with the tariffs for health insurance. He noted that the primary objectives of social health insurance was to limit the rising cost of health care services and to protect people from financial hardships of huge medical bills. What the justification, the objective, give the justification for the government to agree to establish health, health, health insurance in Nigeria. Number one objective is to, I, I will read, number one objective to ensure that every Nigerian has access to good health care services. Number two objective is to protect families from financial hardship of huge, medica, huge med medical bills. Number three, to limit the rise in cost of health care services among different, different income groups. And number four, ensure equitable distribution of healthcare costs among different income groups. How do, we how, do, how do we achieve this objective? Is to establish health insurance, to pool resources, to set standard, to, to, to regulate costs, and so on and so forth. At the end of the tripartite meeting, Representatives of both parties agreed on the resolutions proposed by the Executive Secretary of NHIS, while a follow-up meeting has been scheduled for another day. Welcome back. The NHIS quarterly peer review meeting is part of the decentralization drive of the current NHIS management. It is a forum to help it underscore its performances and re-strategize on ways in which the scheme can move forward. Our crew was in Kano, where the last peer review meeting held, and we bring you highlights of that meeting. Please stay tuned. For the effective implementation of its objectives, the National Health Insurance Scheme has offices in every state across the nation. These offices are responsible for basic operations like carrying out accreditation and reaccreditations, quality assurance, and interface directly with enrollees of the scheme for effective monitoring and evaluation of stakeholder performance. The NHIS also has six zonal offices, which supervise the operations of the state offices while relating directly with the head office. The strength of one of state office, however, may be the weakness of another, but for all-round effectiveness, state offices have to work to improve on their weaknesses. One of the ways the management of the NHIS under Professor Mohammed Nasser Sambul towards helping states and by extension the NHIS to be a more result-oriented organization is the introduction of a quarterly peer review meeting. The peer review meeting is a convergence of members of management staff, zonal and state coordinators to review NHIS processes and cross-fertilize ideas to tackle operational challenges. It is also part of the decentralization process of Professor Nasser Sambo-led administration. Over the year, as we are trying to consolidate our, our rebranding and strengthen the organization through a decentralized uh, operation, giving more powers to the state to be able to take uh, fundamental decisions on implementation. We now bring them together and we are discussing the new business processes in detail so that uh, every state coordinator will be conversant with the new uh, business process of the National Health Insurance Scheme. The platform of uh, peer review gives an opportunity to enable people uh, share experiences, 
uh, you know, and then share understandings and then share strategies and share ways and means by which they had gotten around some of the challenges. In some instances, uh, some persons may be able to deal with some, some issues a lot more effectively than some other persons. So those who may not have the strategy that some others have can now learn from those who have been able to develop and generate the capacity and strategy for dealing with issues. The first peer review meeting for the year 2022 held in Kano from 27th to 28th January 2022. Why Kano? Basically, you see, it's a national organization. So we changed places. The last peer review that we had was in Nasarawa. We changed places and so the next time we expect that we might be going to the south. So the aim is we comb all the all the states uh -huh. and because we have state offices there you know they feel that sense of belonging and based on the information the processes that were mrs asma usurki gm planning and statistics gave the opening remarks at the meeting where she outlined the activities to include presentations of an overview of enrollment and access to health care presentations by the various departments presentation of the new nhis organogram Presentation from the various zonal and state offices showing successes, achievements and challenges. Presentation of a new business process, amongst others. Asma Userki explains what the new business process is all about. Essentially, in this uh, meeting, um, we hope that at the end of the day, we would come up with a basically a business process where operations of the various departments are defined, clearly defined. Everyone knows their responsibility. Where there are overlaps, you would have um, it would be um, ironed out so that everything is clearly spelt out. A key part of the peer review meeting is the presentation of key resolutions adopted at the last peer review meeting, highlights of which were presented by the general manager, special duties in charge of the states and zonal offices. Some of the resolutions bordered on improving enrollment. The following are the information that we noted for action on the enrollment. The first is total overhauling and reconfiguration of the ICT system and processes to make it more efficient. We also resolved that all previous enrollments not captured in the databases are to be synchronized immediately by adopting records in the systems used during the data capturing exercises. It was resolved also that there should be a development of mechanisms for identifying double registration at the point of carrying out fresh registrations. Itang Kapuna, the Deputy General Manager, former sector department, presented the overview on enrollment and access to health care. The presentation was based on data received from the formal sector department in 2020 and 2021. It analyzed the data, x-rayed the challenges and made recommendations going forward. Wrong data on the register. A large portion of data analyzed focused on the new flagship program of the NHIS, namely GIFSHIP. The formal sector is the gatekeeper for the entrance and exit of the of enrollees under the scheme. And um, to achieve the universal um, health coverage in 2030, GiveShip was introduced November 26, 2020, and it has helped in expanding um, coverage. The presentation went through the performance of GiveShip in terms of enrollment, rollout by the various states, and performance of the various types across the states. GiveShip C for constituencies and GiveShip R for retirees were examples. Now this is for GiveShip R, the retirees, as at the January 2022 register. We have the police and the DSS retirees. The DSS retirees make up about 10%, um, of which 1% are females, and the police are about 90%. So we have more police retirees. But this has come up from between August and now, the um, DSS retirees were about 7%, has come up to 10.3%. So we have more DSS um, retirees actually enrolling into the program. This is for gift ship C. And the key here is that the states um, that are participating, currently participating in gift ship C are colored in um, green, while those not participating are colored in uh, the orangish um, yellow color. 
challenges confronting the gift ship were identified and recommendations given. The presentation of the NHIS business process was an important part of the Cano peer review meeting. The business process drawn up by a committee conceptualizes the activities of the various departments and linkages of all NHIS operations, both external and internal. Now this further breaks down the linkages. This is for internal linkages. What the linkage with ICT is, is for the ICT to always hold TV grant access for us to view aggregated data daily, weekly, or monthly from the state offices. And then also, depending on the level of access, to download things or save in Excel format in both the static and the dynamic domain. This will mean that when the enrollments are done on the states, we'll be able to see them on time, online, real time, as they are going on. And at the end of the day, we can say, this is what has gone on in each state or in what zone on a daily basis. The Kernel Peer Review Meeting also saw the presentation of the new NHIS organogram with the concept of putting square peg in the right hole and improving efficiency. It was presented by Alhaji Sanagarba, General Manager, Human Resources Department. A major future of the new organogram is the reduction of the departments from 14 to 11. The new organogram is now depicting 11 departments. And by that action, three departments have been reduced from the departmental status to units. What is it? And the departments are marketing, legal, and donors, and support division of the department. Also presented at the Canoe Peer Review Meeting was the NHIS Reward System, an initiative of the Executive Secretary, Professor Mohammed Nasser Sambo, to improve efficiency and boost performance. The key parameters for the rewarding of staff performance as drawn up by a committee were unveiled. The criteria for the best staff. Functionality, honesty, confidentiality, efficiency, record keeping, neatness, and reliability. Zonal offices, state offices as usual, use the opportunity of the peer review meeting to present their achievements, highlight their challenges, ask questions, and receive advice and recommendations in order to achieve the overall objective of their exercise, which is to make the scheme's operational process hitch free for staff stakeholders and enrollees towards advancing universal health coverage. Uh, we have already highlighted uh, by former Center, SPA and other departments. Welcome back from that break. Easy access to healthcare continues in our stakeholders segment. On this episode, we spoke to NHIS officials from the zonal and state offices who are a critical part of the scheme. They both serve as the tactical and operational base of the NHIS and as stakeholders in this quest for universal coverage. How do they feel about the peer review meeting? For Mr. Olufemi Akingbadi, Lagos State Zonal Coordinator, the peer review is an avenue to share ideas while management's involvement in the review is to help them make good policies that will take the scheme forward. The peer review is to review what your colleagues are doing. It's a combination of all the state coordinators, the zonal coordinators, and all heads of departments at the headquarters. So one of the things that we are trying to achieve is to share ideas, to share knowledge, and to commonly come up 
with our common problems so that it can be solved. And one of the reasons why we have brought in the people at the head office is because they are the policy formulators. We are supposed to be the implementers at the field. And a lot of policies, policies have been developed and they pass it down to the field and it's not implementable. So sometimes we have to bring them in so that we review some of the policies that are coming to the states and then be able to profile solution based on the knowledge that we have coming from the field. And then for the state coordinators also, there are a lot of things that we do in common. And for some, is a problem. For some, it seems as if it's easy. So we need to share ideas. How are you doing it that is easy? What are you achieving? And then we look at our performance also. One state is performing more than the other. What do you have that I don't have that is making you perform? And a lot of things like that. So basically, it's uh, to review what we have done in the last year and to look at how we are going to move the scheme forward in subsequent years. Some others say the peer review meeting is quite engaging and educative for them. It's quite engaging. Um, and of course, we've had um, in-depth analysis of our and, you know, procedures, but like our business processes in terms of enrollments, accreditation, reaccreditation, and of course, um, reconciliation of um, hospitals and HMOs in terms of level of indebtedness. And for us, so far, what we've done is we've established all the gray areas and, of course, taking steps to, you know, to address them. So it's going forward. You know, if we have issues, we can address at our state level, and then, of course, if it needs escalation, escalate to the headquarters for prompt attention. Well, honestly, it has been very enriching, very sensitizing, very enlightening. We've been reminded once again that this present management means business. We have been reminded to gear up more, to tighten our belts more. In summary, the peer review is seen as a major part of the decentralization reforms of the Professor N. M. Sambolet administration and will only help the implementation of the scheme. When such high level um, authorities meet, what we do is to actually uh, brush minds, rub minds, brainstorm, come out with issues relating to operations of the, uh, of the scheme and uh, try to strategize on ways to um, move forward. You have heard from some of the participants who are key staff of the NHIS from across the state as they comment on the peer review meetings and its importance in carrying everyone along. I think I paid almost, almost nothing. We went easily. We only paid 10%. We all work towards accelerating universal health coverage. Everybody, irrespective of people's gender, has access to basic health care services. Easy access to healthcare for all every Saturday at 8 p.m. on the NTA Network Service. We will now take your questions in this last segment of the program. Where do I register? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? Question. What should enrollees do if prescribed drugs are out of stock? Out of stock is not a part of NHI, so it shouldn't have even arise anywhere. All right. As long as uh, the NHI has a drug list, which every facility that is on the NHI should have, nobody should tell anybody that their a drug is out of stock. It's not part of NHIs, and it's 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 it's, it's not good, because what we are seeing now is that the healthcare providers are trying to to uh, make Nigerians begin to suspect that the NHI is not really, and we are hearing it everywhere. Yes. One thing is that these guys are paid upfront. So, and when you come into NHIS and sign a contract, an agreement to abide by the guidelines of NHIS, there's no need to tell anybody that is out of stock. So, and that is just what we have to say for now. Where do I register? How can I get enrolled? Where do I How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? With this, we've come to the end of today's episode of Easy Access to Healthcare for All. Please join us next week, same time and same station, for another interesting package. Easy.